What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here in this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys, we had another town hall this past Thursday, April 11th, 2024. And as usual, I have your five biggest takeaways. So for anybody that is new to the channel or new to the series, every time there is a town hall or just major kind of event with the team, I'll, I'll give my five biggest takeaways. It is not a summary. There's other fantastic uh, content creators, video and written that put together full summaries. But uh, for me, these are just the five things that stuck out, as well as a couple of bonus items that I'm just going to touch on briefly briefly at the end and maybe even talk about in separate videos if uh, if there's more to discuss. But let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, I will say this, as we're going to go through some stuff, because um, yeah, some of this stuff is going to seem negative, at least, you know, the first couple of items here. But I personally thought that this town hall was fantastic at setting the proper expectations for everyone and i know that's something that the team has not generally done well although since matt has been here uh, or since matt has been ceo uh six months ago or six plus months ago uh, i think he's done a fantastic job with setting proper expectations and just trying to get everybody on the same page on where the team is going and where the project is headed so that being said, a lot of people may not like it, a lot of people may be disappointed, but I personally thought that it was a great town hall for that. I even posted about it on X and was kind of discussing it with some folks there, uh, but it was, you know, despite the fact that there wasn't like too much alpha, there wasn't too much coming out in terms of like releases and all that, I, I thought that it was a great town hall. So I'm looking forward to the next one. Okay, so this first item. NPE, or the player experience, new player or just player experience in general, could take another six months and so you know matt had previous uh previously talked about how they wanted to ramp up marketing at, in the second half of the year right so we were looking at the npe taking <clears throat> excuse me roughly six months from the beginning of 2024 and if you remember what i've been talking about where it's just like hey uh you know i'm not expecting much from sps you know for over the summer if, if, if there's any kind of like run or bitcoin does well or something after the halving I'm just not expecting much because I don't see any catalysts. And I think that this actually takes it further. That confirms my my kind of prediction, right? I, I don't like to make predictions, but confirmed like where I was thinking through on that. And it actually extends it even further to the end of Q3. Uh, because what Matt was saying is that there's still a lot that the team is trying to do and accomplish. And they don't want to turn the jets on in terms of like, you know, getting marketing. And um, uh, until that they they have a situation. Now, what I thought was fantastic was that, and I'm going to do a little bit of an aside here, but it's important. Matt had talked about in that in the town hall, saying like he's seen a bunch of other projects that like have fantastic marketing, right? They just have fantastic marketing, even though they're kind of dull. And so then they go through this like pump and dump process. And I don't disagree with him, right? There was somebody that I remember talking to a while back. Who I'm not going to name now, but it's somebody that you, you guys probably know or have heard of who um, ha had kind of compared some of the games out there and then, you know, took Axie specifically and said, in 2021, Axie, like, Axie was a garbage game. And I, I've never played, so I'm just, these, I'm just paraphrasing, right? Said Axie was like a garbage game, but they had a fantastic marketing department or marketing director, whatever it is, right? And so, therefore, like, you know, they, they were able to get all these eyeballs on the game. They drove the token prices up. That, in and, in and of itself, feeds the marketing even further. And what I liked was, like, you know, Matt wasn't talking about that, but, you know, I, it, it reminded me of that conversation that I had. And uh, what I like about where, where Matt is looking at this, he's like, we can do the same thing, right? It's not difficult to, like, get somebody who's good at marketing and then, you know, just go out there and market the hell out of the game. Again, I, I, I hope that he's right in the sense that it's easier to do it, right? Not a like easier said than done. I hope that it's actually easy for them to do it, but they're trying to do it in the right way by making sure the game is something that people would actually want to stick around afterwards. So, you know, all of that being said, wrapping up point number one here, the the non-player or new sorry non non-player uh, maybe it is non-player experience for all you bears out there all you salty bears the new player experience uh you know could still take another six months i know that they want to add uh you know the onboarding process they want to add one click set rentals but matt is aligning this with the end of the year q4 as well as early next year and again i've been saying this for a while and i i, I don't talk to matt right i i, I 
the only time I've ever spoken with him directly was at Splinterfest, right? So I, I don't know where his head was at. We didn't coordinate on this. This is just my own thought, which is kind of being confirmed now with, uh, you know, Matt's thoughts on the town hall. Um, I, I think Q4 could generally be pretty big for Splinterlands, right? Now, for the broader crypto market, I think the summer is going to be a nice, fun time post having. And then I do believe like the bull run will get into high gear, maybe even like the beginnings of euphoria mode at the end of this year and into next year, which again, this is why I'm not worried about Splinterlands, right? And I know people are, are looking at this and they're like, oh, you're like all bearish, whatever. Like, no, I just, I'm being realistic. I don't expect much out of the next three, actually now six months, right? From, from, uh, from token values, but I'm not too worried because I think the bull run extends longer than that. Now, again, I have no crystal ball. We could, you know, it's an election year in the U.S. There's all kinds of crazy black swans that could happen with the market, right? Uh, you know, debt is spiraling out of control, all of that stuff. So I, I have no idea what could happen. But if you just look at this in the vacuum of like how crypto bull runs have gone in the past, they don't just end the summer after the halving, right? They continue on. And I do genuinely believe that split on this is going to be okay. And I think the timeline that Matt is looking at is one that I am now, you know, understanding or I have been understanding the past couple of weeks and talking about with you guys. But now it's just confirmed that like this is this is where they're looking at. They are not looking at, hey, we want to get this stuff out by the summer. Um, so, you know, for people that, that want to take advantage of summer, Again, I, I'm not. This is not financial advice, but I understand why people are allocating capital elsewhere. I'm doing the same, right? But I'm not selling my Splinterlands assets. I'm still playing my game. You know, playing the game, doing brawls, tournaments. Uh, you know, I'm having the bot mainly run run for me right now. But it's all just collecting and staking SPS because I'm fairly confident that the bull run will continue on past the summer, and uh, you know, six months from now things could look really, really good for crypto and hopefully Splinterlands if they're in a much better position and have brought on a proper marketing team to hit the, you know, hit the ground running. Um, okay, so that's the first one. Second one, land is delayed. The information that we found out as well is that Farpatrod is no longer with the team. So I, I genuinely wish him the best. I appreciate all the work that he did. Uh, but, you know, that that is that. So I, I guess that makes sense as to why land is delayed. Although, you know, Matt did once again talk about the fact that the player experience is much more important. And I again, I don't disagree with him. I'm not a big land holder. And therefore, like all these land delays are just kind of funny to me. I mean, yes, they're frustrating, but they're not as frustrating if somebody, you know, for people who are actually deep, knee deep into the land game. Um, but I can understand why, why people would be upset about that. For me, it's just like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Of course, of course, land, of course land is delayed. Like what else would I be talking about on one of these videos? Right. Uh, but you know, again, I agree with where the team has, has made this approach. I genuinely think that, I, I mean, for all of you guys saying, you know, land 2.0 is going to be out this year. I, I mean, Matt's, uh, Matt and investigator talked about the fact that they want to get 1.6 out. Hopefully. I mean, they're saying this quarter, but I mean, investigator was already saying hopefully by the end of next quarter, Q3, which would be the end of September, meaning that they're not even going to start any kind of dev work until Q4, until October of this year. So I don't know what this looks like. Obviously, I, I, I still have a lot of faith in the team in terms of like getting land out. But for all the people that were saying I was being too bearish, that 2.0 was not going to come out this year. I think I was right on line with, with what I was saying. Now, that being said, what I did like about what investigators said was maybe there's some stuff in 1.6 that they just skip. And I don't know what that would be, right? But uh, Or they combine somewhat with 2.0. And maybe we we do get elements of 2.0 before the end of the year. And I have said that, right? So, But we're, there's no chance in which we get what Matt had on the 2.0 white paper out in the next nine months, right? Less than nine months. Geez, we're already halfway through April at this point. So eight and a half months. Um, so that is the status of land. That is where things are at. That being said, Cryptomancer and Investigator are are focusing on land now. Um, you know, Cryptomancer's a beast at whatever he puts his mind to. He's obviously a big land holder. I'm excited to see what he can do with it. Investigator seems to be like the jack of all trades. And he's dude, investigator, like fr from what I've been able to see, shout out to Investigator, because he's he's always just looking out for the project, for the community. He's like always just trying to fix things here and there. And so um, yeah, he's he's one of my favorite people on the team. I don't get to chat with him much, but um, you know, he's he's a cool dude, and I'm excited to see him and Cryptomancer kind of taking the reins on land and, and where things go from there. Um 
Okay, number three, let's jump into the Legendary Summoners. I made a video about this saying that we are not too far away from the first Legendary Summoner actually hitting the game, right? Uh, but now, we, we don't have the stats quite yet, but it has been confirmed that they will be both dual element as well as tactics-based. And they even shared artwork for the first one, I believe... Jeez, I, I forgot what it is. I, I, I forgot what, what elements it is. I think it is fire and death. Don't quote me on that. But again, just interesting to see how that, that will play out. And, uh, you know, hopefully these will be cards that people are chasing in packs and, um, you know, uh, hopefully lead to more, more sales and people getting involved in Rebellion. Uh, number four, Validators. So this is another interesting one. We had a a proposal recently not pass or fail that was trying to give the team a little bit more capital to focus on validators and to hire people to come and finish them. You know, Matt said at the end of the day, like, you know, all this stuff about exchange listings and whatever, like validators, it, it's his personal mission because of the type of game he wants to create. It, they need to go out this year. So the team is making adjustments. They are putting, you know, folks from, uh, from the team, putting some of their resources toward this and want to get it uh, out and ready by the end of the year. Now, there's two main things that he said would need to be done, and that is that the main Splinterlands website would need to be updated so that it's processing all of the SPS transactions, not on the Hive blockchain, but I guess on the layer up, which would be the, you know, the SPS chain. And then, of course, they would need to get the software ready for uh, anybody who wanted to run the validators themselves. So uh, both of those still seem like big things. Matt, in fact, said that they were quite big things. So we'll see how things shape out there. Um, if I'm being honest with you guys, I, again, I'm not trying to be – I'm not trying to throw shade or you know, throw uh, just be bearish to be bearish. But this is like a personal – it seems like a personal like goal for Matt it doesn't seem like it would be a high priority for the business. Meaning that like generating revenue, creating a space in which new players can come in and have a better experience, all that stuff, it's not going to be prioritized over any of that. So I, my expectations are already set that validators are not going to come out this year um, just because the team is already so far behind the eight ball and they're focused on all the other things, which I think are the right things for them to focus on. I mean, at the end of the day, what sucks about validators really – uh, is the fact that people spent money on the validators and we had to inflate the SPS pool and voucher pool much earlier than expected. That should have never happened, right? Um, but it is what it is. We're here now. I think, obviously, the sooner validators go online and people have to work for their their rewards, then, you know, uh, the, the licenses will be re repriced accordingly, which means they'll probably go down for a little bit. But ultimately, you know, um, it's not providing any value to the ecosystem or to like the, the team, I should say. It will provide value to the ecosystem, but it's not going to provide any any value to the team necessarily. Um, and so I just I just don't think it's going to be highly prioritized unless the DAO decides to, to redo and and add some uh, add some resources for them. But either way, if they can get it done by the end of the year, that's fantastic. It's just I wouldn't expect them to prioritize it, nor would I want them to over all the other things that they're trying to do. Okay, and then finally, number five, this is probably the one that I'm most excited about is uh, somebody who is very getting very familiar with a lot of the ETH Layer 2s. Now, again, I, I haven't done much with Arbitrum and Optimism, but obviously Base is uh, the Coinbase layer, that or Coinbase L2 for ETH, that I use very heavily for uh, Parallel. Now, I think it's really important for the team to get involved with at least that one, if not the others, although Matt did mention all of them. Just because at the end of the day, like, you know, look at what's happening with Solana. Solana still keeps going down. Uh, you know, Ethereum is still the, you know, it's still the biggest smart contracts platform out there. And if these L2s can provide some kind of utility, you're already seeing games like Parallel, which is huge, adopt it. Uh, I, I, I think it's well worth the team's, um, I think it's well worth their effort to go and try to get focused on there. Now, I think that we should be even trying to do more stuff with Parallel. I think that'd be kind of cool, especially because Parallel is on base, if we can get bridge to base. Again, Matt, one thing that Matt said is that it's not just about bridging out there or you know bridging the token or whatever the case is. It's about doing something that makes people realize. So doing some kind of like launch or marketing opportunity with one of the platforms, that would make sense. But again, all of this stuff is in the back pocket until the player experience is done, until the team feels that things are in, in a much better space. So... You know, while I'm excited about this, and I'm excited about obviously where, where Parallel and Prime are going, uh, the team still has their work cut out for them. But 
that could be, I don't want to say a, a good thing necessarily. They, they need to sit down and do the work. Um, but if these other chains, if these other L2 start to get more adoption, meaning that the audience or like the target audience starts going there and, you know, parallel has been growing leaps and bounds with people jumping in. So I, I think that would be fantastic for Splinterless to come in after an audience is already there on the platform and be like, Hey, we're a TCG too, right? Different type auto battler, all that. But now you're, you know, you're able to get your, your assets easily from base into hive and vice versa. So that is something that I'm very much looking forward to. I'm glad the team has at, at least it somewhere on their radar. Uh, but again, there's a lot of work to be done before that can even happen. Um, so that wraps up the five takeaways. Let's jump into the bonus items. So the team is going to be partnering with Archmage uh, to add bots to modern format. So, uh, you know, I use Archmage. I, I've had Max from the Archmage team on many times. Seems like a good dude. They, they've always been... I, I've always appreciated everything about Archmage. Again, I'm not trying to throw shade at any of the other botting services. I've just only used Archmage, so I have nothing but, you know, nice things to say about them uh, and, and the people that I've either gotten to meet or gotten to know through, through the community. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm looking forward to how this can help alleviate the terrible experience many people are having in modern format. Uh, the other part of this with the bots and battle helpers is that Siler actually just started. They finished the paperwork earlier this week. And so, you know, for anybody who's looking at suspicious behavior and wants the team to take a look, Siler, who I, I believe they, they brought him on as a, as a contractor is what they said, is going to be taking on, you know, taking on uh, this. So I don't know what the process will be, but... You know, now now you'll have somebody directly that you can go to that will be digging into all of this. Um, and then a couple of things that I think are really exciting for the Glint Shop. Um, I so the guaranteed rarity is something that the team seems dead set on doing, which I love, right? Because I have all the commons, I have all the rares. It's just epics and legendaries that I need, and I would actually prefer to spend more glint knowing that i would get a guaranteed rarity and i hope that's uh that's something that they do and provide it seems like uh, it's something that they will the other thing was an idea that somebody had put out i forgot i apologize i, I don't know who it was but it was a, a suggestion during the q a session about having an option to re-roll draws so you know you're already going to get the same foil the same count of cars same rarity whatever it is but could you re-roll maybe paying with, uh, you know, burning DEC or vouchers. And, uh, you know, Matt really liked the idea. Nate seemed to be on the idea. I like it too, just because it adds a little bit more utility for vouchers and DEC wherever we can burn them. I am all for it. Again, it's going to be an optional thing. So it's like you do your draw and it's like, uh, do I want to double down, right? You don't have to, but do I want to double down and pay, you know, I've already, I've already paid the glint for this. So do I want to throw in, you know, a couple of DEC or a voucher or whatever it ends up being? Uh, I, I think that that would be great because if we start to do that at scale, things could get really fun and interesting. But that is all I have for you guys in this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What did you guys think of the town hall overall? What did you think about just where Splinter Lens is at and what the direction the team is planning to go over the next, call it year, 12 to 18 months? Um, very curious to hear your thoughts. That is all I have for you guys. I'll catch you all in the next one and see you around the game. Take care.